Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's see if we understood the previous video. Here we're going to do a more general case. Again, we have an object with unknown mass m, and here we have the first time we have a force F1 acting on the object, and it covers the distance d in time t. We assume that there's no friction and that the object starts at rest, so therefore we can say that the initial position and the initial velocity is zero. Here we have the same case where we start from rest, the coefficient of friction is zero, but now a different force acts on the mass, and this time it covers six times as much distance in twice the time. So now what we're trying to do is say, well, if F2 is some, is some constant times F1, what is that constant? How many times is F2 equal to F1? So to do that again, we're going to use the equation F equals MA, and also we need to find an equation for the acceleration. So what we're going to do here is we're going to again look for our equation kinematics. Remember that we don't have the velocity, the final velocity. We know the initial velocity is zero, but since we don't have the final velocity, we cannot find acceleration using these two equations. So there's really only one of the three equations that's useful, even though here we have zero for the initial position and zero for the initial velocity, we do know the end position, how far it went, and we know the time that it took. Now, in this case, it's in general terms. We know that the distance is d and the time is t. So we can use that equation. We can say then that a is equal to, if we solve this equation for a, it'd be 2 times x divided by t squared. 2 times x divided by t squared. So notice now we can write the force in terms of the mass, which is m, times acceleration, which can be written like this. So for F1, that's going to be equal to m times the acceleration. Well, let, let me write in general case, in the general case first. I may make it easier for everybody to see. So first, let's do this in the general case. So we can write that F is equal to the mass times acceleration, which can be written as twice the distance divided by the time squared. So in this case, we can write F1 is equal to the mass times twice the distance, and the distance for case 1 is d, and the time is t, so that will be twice the distance over t squared. Now for F2, we still have the same mass, so now it's 2 times the distance covered, and the distance covered is 6d, so 6d, divided by the time squared, in this case the time is 2t, so it'll be 2t quantity squared. So when we work that out, this gives us m is equal, or m times 12d divided by 4t squared, and then 4 goes into 12 three times, so this is equal to m times 3d over t squared, and now let's compare that to what we have over here for case 1. For case 1, we have the force is equal to m times 2d over t squared, and here the force 2 is equal to 3d over, two squared. So, or over t squared. So that means we can write f2 that is equal to, let's see, m times 2d over t squared, but remember, we had a 3 instead of 2, so we multiply this times 3 over 2. So when we have 3 over 2 times 2, that gives us 3, which is the same as what we have over here. And then we can write this as 3 times, or 3 over 2 times m2d over t squared. And then we come up here and realize, well, that was equal to f1. So therefore, f2 is equal to 3 over 2 f1. And again, writing it on the side so we can see it. So we say that F2 equals 3 over 2 F1. And going back over here, when we're trying to figure out how much bigger is F2, well, it looks like it's 50% bigger, or one and a half times F1. And that's how it's done.